So you're just riding along. We're out here fishing these wrecks, catching some snapper. And you, you know, you see those frigate birds working. We saw that bait ball pulled up, all kinds of little fish eating. Then you think it's over and then there's a school of cobia there. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. All right, Scotty, so today, we're gonna go out in the golf, buddy. A slicker like this, what we, we really enjoy down here in the Keys is going on the, on the other side. You know, a lot of people come down here and fish on the ocean, but man, that golf has some special, special things to offer, you know? When you call me at 8.30 at night and say, we got, I gotta be here, I get it. But no, you gonna take me to a rack, what are we gonna do? I, well, I got some area. Um, with some wrecks, I got some area with some bottom. Um, I want to poke my head out there and see if there is a little bit of a swell maybe. I know we don't have any wind, but um, a lot's been happening in the golf here the last few weeks. Maybe uh, we'll be the first ones there. Storm-wise, yeah. and uh, there might be a little residual. Well, the big question is, are, yes. we, an are we anchoring? Yes, you're gonna, <laughs> yes. If I get to pull anchor and catch a big fish. Yeah. Scotty, I wanted to get you out in the golf. That was very important. Um, you know, you, you, you don't do a whole lot of golf fishing up here in, in, in Duck Key. You know, you, you tend to I, always head south. I do zero. Right, zero. <laughs> so I, I enjoy, you know, getting a chance to take you out there. We, we spend, you know, I'd say 50% of our time guiding in the Keys in the, in the golf as well, as we do on the Atlantic. That's a nice bonus for Key West, I'll tell you. Yeah. All right, Scotty, I'm gonna type in this number. The first spot we're gonna check. We'll see it, you know, what the water color's like, how clear it is, and, and you know, if, it, if it's too dirty, we're probably gonna, you know, just keep moving along. All right, so now I got it in, look. I'm gonna engage the autopilot, and you can sit back and relax, buddy. You know, the great thing is out there, we got numerous wrecks, you know, a lot of shrimp boat wrecks that have, have sunken over the years. You know, back in the day when they were wooden boats, uh, a lot has changed nowadays. You don't have that happening. You know, you got a lot better equipment, a lot, lot better, electronics to tell you about the weather so you're not getting caught out there. So there's not much left of these boats. There's, you know, a fuel tank, maybe the rigging, maybe the, the engine block. And uh, I wanted to get out there and try to hit some. The water temperature is still really warm. We're, we're in mid-October here and we really haven't had a cold front. I think uh, actually while we were out there yesterday, I think that was the first front of the year, which was basically a cool front. You can't even call that a cold front. But you get out there and, and it, it's just like anything else that we do. The first thing you do is you anchor up. You know, get, get, try to get positioned right. It's very, very important that you're up, up tied. Um, you know, want to get a couple bow lengths up, depending on how hard the current is, and uh, get anchored up and trickle out a little bit of chum, maybe put a block in the bag. There's life everywhere. You're gonna see bonitas and blue runners and sea turtles and porpoises and everything you can imagine out there. And what we'll do is we'll start just like you were doing, the knocker rig. Basically just a hook, uh, a sinker on your line, and then a hook, you know, no swivel. The sinker actually rides right down on top of the hook. Mm -hmm. And um, we were using some leftover uh, pelchies we had from uh, the day before that were dead. We had um, a lot of shrimp boat trash as well, which is the bycatch from the shrimpers. And um, you know, that's exactly what's out there because it was caught out there. You know, that bait, that shrimp trash. You're bringing was... it back home. Right, exactly. There we go. I think he ate that thing a while ago. Leaping on it, huh? Ugh. Got me a red grouper coming up. It's our favorite species. What you got, buddy? Silky shark. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's that one you marked out there. Oh. Off the edge. <laughs> you can't uh, fight him. Might as well join him. Whoa, this big old barracuda's gonna take care of him. That was a big black one. All right. He's gonna get my circle hook. Look at that coo. Didn't care about the shark. He just wants that what he'd spit up. As big as your leg. All right. 
scissors. Let you go. Re ring. <laughs> That's a good one, dude. Don't give him away. Don't give it away. Target species. Sim Rats Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad. Go with confidence. Hawks K Resort, the only key you'll need. Shimano. Bubble Blade, the ultimate sportsman's knife. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Power Pro, CDAP, and Costa. I got the double hitter, I think, for you. <laughs> His buddy was just there. All right, letting you go. You gotta be aggressive, man, with them kudas. Yellowtail. Watch out for the kuda. I see the bear <laughs> <laughs> he wants them as bad as we do. That's but, a little cooler. <laughs> yeah, you just got to be aggressive when you're catching the, the eaters because everybody else down there wants to eat them, you know? Pretty little yellow tail. Put that one in the box, I think, Scott. A little, little marathon in you. Yeah, you got <laughs> to start somewhere, gotta baby. got to start somewhere, baby. <laughs> A little Gulf of Mexico mutton snapper. There's that little mutton spot. It's a start. Starting it up. You got to build it. Ooh, something got him. <laughs> oh, very mummy. <laughs> oh, I see the lips of your fish. I know the technique that works really good on these. Oh, you got those figured out? I got them figured out. Oh. This sugar's going to take a boat ride. Where my mangroves at, Scott? I'm trying to find them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's your flounder. Spit my flounder out. You just spit it out. You got me some more fillets, Scotty? Oh, yeah. Nice. Right. Another yeller. Another nice yeller. You always want to leave them yellowtail in the water for a little bit while they throw up everything. There you go. Oh! Oh! <laughs> that almost was a great it. idea. Hooked up. I'm just checking my bait. Whatever's on here has been on here a while. Another one of them. Uh, baby mutton. Little baby mutton snapper. Baby mutton. <laughs> be some super white meat there. Yellowtail. Of epic smallness. Yeah. Sailor's choice or what? <laughs> Oh yeah, mini me. Now I feel like I'm back home again. 33050 on that joker. That's a 33050 <laughs> right there. Sure. That's a mangrove boy. There it is. There he is. Oh, watch oh. out. <laughs> That's a good one, dude. Don't give him away. Don't give it away. Target species. There he is, buddy. Now what did you what was the bait of choice? That Mahara, but a little more weight because that tide's running. A little more weight. I hear you. That current's changing. Oh, Just had to man. wait through it. Mm. Give me some copper magic. Manganese. Oh, gag grouper. Oh, a little grouper. gag grouper. Look at those Carolina blue tips. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> that is awesome. All right. Things are looking up. The bait stealer. Oh, let me have it right back in my scales patch. Clean that right up. This one's pan sized if I want to do a whole fried fish, but I'm gonna let him go. Good one. This one had a little more pull to him, but might be, oh, big lane, I think. How about that one, Scotty? Well, that's a keeper. Pretty one. Yeah, beautiful meat on those things. Look what he's spitting up, big old mana shrimp. <laughs> old mana shrimp right there. We're not, I got a keeper lane this time. Sweet. Good eats right there, Scotty. Caught our limit of lane snappers, uh, which is uh, 10 apiece. 
nice size lanes. I mean, these, these are all respectable, you know, size lane snapper, big old lane snappers. Um, you know, we, we had a, a few other snappers. We had some yellowtail snapper. We had a bunch of sharks and cooters that were give, playing, you know. We had it all. We had a yellowtail, lane, mutton, and a mangrove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only but, thing except for the American red. Yep, yeah, but we had to, to deal with the predators, right? So we made a couple moves because when the sharks got bad um, and the barracudas got on us and we, we wiggled around and we tried a couple spots. And, um, but, but all in all, uh, very simple way to fish, very easy. You don't need to get up early and throw the cast net 100 times. Right. You could ride out there with a box of herring, a box of squid, and get out in the golf. Uh, throw a pinfish trap out night before. Yep, any kind of debris is gonna hold fish. It's all sand out there, and it, it goes on forever and ever and ever. So if there is any type of structure, it's gonna hold fish. Hey, you want to see more of Into the Blue? Well, you can. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even come on over to our YouTube channel. See you there. Hi, I'm Captain Scott Walker into Blue TV. Take a few minutes today to talk about radar. Simrad's new Halo 24 radar system. The ultimate radar system for mid-range boats, even to big boats, has a second or third radar. Why do you have radar? You don't need it every day, but when you need it, it has to be reliable. And this new radar with four preset buttons for harbor, long range, birds, and tracking, it just makes it easy for you to buy it and use it. One of the great features is to be able to see near and far. Before today, when Simrad came out with the new system, you had to have two radars if you wanted to see long range and short range. Now the new 24 inch compact dome gives you the ability to see near and far simultaneously, to follow 10 targets simultaneously. What does that mean? It means when you're on the water and things go bad, if it gets cloudy, the rain, lightning, fog, you can hit a button and continue on with your day and get your family and friends home safe. The Halo 24 has a new 60 RPM rotation. That's one sweep per second. When you're in a tight quarters, leaving the slip, coming in heavy fog, the one sweep per second gives you almost real-time view of what's out there. That gives you the ultimate view for collision resistance, and that's what we want. With built-in Velocity Track Doppler technology, it actually color codes warnings. So you're fishing or you're in a tight spot, it's gonna choose the most important targets next to you and highlight them, probably in red for you better be paying attention, yellow, kind of pay attention, and green, he's there, but don't worry about it. How much easier is that? One little feature that doesn't seem like much, but it's the ability to instantly turn on. I don't like to run my radar all day, but when I do need it, it has to power up first. And that could take one minute to two minutes, and sometimes that's not enough time to avoid a collision. The new Halo 24 instantly turns on and gives me coverage, no matter what situation I'm in during the day. The new Simrad Halo 24 radar has way more features than you'll probably ever need, but if you do need them, they're there so you can go in confidence.